All right, James Anthony, welcome to This Week in Photo, man. How's it going? It's going well, man. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah. yeah. Look, yeah, thanks for look. thanks for doing this, first of all, and thanks to Adobe for for connecting us to do this. Uh, when I first saw your name, I wasn't familiar with your work or, or your Instagram profile, and I went over there. I'm just sitting on the couch scrolling. I'm like, okay, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was one, it was one of those moves. What an impressive body of work just on Instagram. I know that's the tip of the iceberg. Right, just right. on Instagram, that's that's impressive. So. Before we dive into who James Anthony is, tell us just, you know, your style of shooting and, you know, all that. How did, how did you get from, from, you know, somebody who doesn't know anything about photography, like, you know, all of us start to doing what you do? You know, it's, it's a uh, weird one. Thank you. Um, it's one of those things where you don't realize um, that you're, you're kind of snowballing it into the type of creative that you are when you pick up the camera it's like all right i want to shoot this type of content and then somewhere along the lines you you realize uh well this is sparking an interest uh to me more so i say that to say i started photography just picking up the camera shooting but then the first my first love has always been um just being an artist altogether the first thing i ever started doing was drawing um yeah. so later on in my career, I found a way to kind of have fun with the photography and the illustration and, and kind of social media has been kind of like my platform to kind of showcase all of that. So the Instagram kind of evolved into something else outside of the website and the portfolio. But uh, yeah, it, I'd say my mother always had a camera in my hand, um, just growing up, you know, the, the kind you film, you roll up, take it mm -hmm. to the CBS or the, or the uh, peoples back then. Um, you yep. get it developed. And um, it was the excitement of getting that batch, that that folder of the the photos, looking through them to see what uh, you know process well, to see what you took. And then uh, I think in college uh, I started. I went to school in Savannah, Georgia. So the backdrop is this historic city, uh, beautiful. Our school is like sitting on marshland so as far as a uh, natural landscape i always had an amazing backdrop to shoot my friends or models in front of uh, i fell in love with um photography as far as portraiture and then i did an internship at vibe magazine in 2006 in the editorial department and that's what i fell in love with editorial photography and after upon graduation, I think that that's kind of what I was uh, set out seeking is those editorial experiences, just because I had fallen so much in love with it. And then having a background in entertainment as far as uh, a background in theater, it was it was like the perfect merge between photography and an interest in the entertainment world, uh, you know, because I, I, I aspired to be an actor for so long. So mm -hmm. I found like that perfect medium, which was um entertainment photography and then that's kind of what i've just been honing in on over over the past years coming up on two decades and yeah and then like i said earlier later uh I, well later i decided to uh kind of have fun more on social media and what's been happening now is all these opportunities these amazing opportunities especially in the year 2020 um they've all come from my social media. So I'm just right, grateful right. for, to, I'm, I'm grateful to be coming up in this age um, yeah, when man. social media is like the go-to for everything. Yeah, it's so interesting, you know, and you, and there's always something like that. There's always a catalyst in whatever age, and you know, where people say, I'm glad I came up in this age because right. we didn't have this before, you know, and there's always things. And it's a, from my perspective, you know, it's, it's, it's got to be a confluence of you and your talents and circumstances and and opportunities that meet at the same time and you having the wherewithal to seize on that opportunity and push it forward right yeah, so. yeah for sure uh, there's some yeah. part of me that feels like the the hustler in me the new york hustler in me i'm i'm born <laughs> in new york i feel like that has a lot to do with where my career has ended and it's just kind of like um you know, don't put me in a room with anyone if you don't want me to get to know them because I'm, I'm going to do it. So it's, <laughs> you know, I always tell people, you know, I'm the person that hops in the back of an Uber and I'm going to spark a conversation, you know, well, back before the pancetta that we're in. Uh, yeah. Uh, when Uber pool and Lyft pool was a thing, when I would get in a car with other people, there's, there's no way I'm going to ride 
20 minutes, 15 minutes with you and not spark a conversation. It's just not going to happen. So yeah, I would definitely be that. Windows. Yeah, exactly. So I think a big uh, attribute to placement in where I am now is just being a people person. Um, you know, it gets you far. You know, I want to I wanted to explore that a little bit because that I think that the personality and the ability to connect with others and just not being shy, all that stuff comes into play, especially when you're doing editorial photography or fashion, anything oh, yeah. that's that has people involved, right? There's not landscape or macro or something like that. If there's people involved, then you as the artist have to be the technician because you have to understand your gear and f-stops and shutter speeds and you know whatever brand you're using and how it works you have to understand the science right so you're tech yeah. you're a technician you're a scientist you got to understand light and the physics and the properties of light and how all that's going down and shadow properties of shadow and all that stuff um, but then the i think one of the big things that you hit on is you have to be able to connect with your subject right. to elicit what you want out of them and make it a collaboration. And that's the psychology piece of it. So what would, would you agree? Like if you had to look at three of those things, psychology, technology, and you know, the science slash physics of it all, which one would you think photographers should work on the most? Wow. I, I mean, to be honest, I feel like uh, the psychology of it all um, is number <laughs> one. And I say that because you know, we hear all the time, it's like, oh, it's not who you know, but who knows you and or or it's uh, it's like you can the person that has. Well, I'll put it this way. <laughs> the. Um, you can have someone that has an amazing voice and they're never discovered as an artist as far as a singer, but then you can have someone that's mediocre, they can hold the tune, but they have that je ne sais quoi as, a, as an artist, you know, you can tell when they get on stage, they have presence, they're engaging, mm -hmm. they command attention. Those are the people who are the top sellers um, because they feel like, all right, well, you you e evoke something out of people or, or you make people feel a certain type of way just based off of who you are. So we're going to try to brand you and market you to the masses. Meanwhile, you can have someone that can blow and, you know, like sing for the gods, but then when you get them in a conversation, they're a little awkward. So I, I feel like when people want to know more about you or, or they like the person that uh, you are, a lot of times being a people person can get you further than a person that may be more technically savvy. And so I, I think from my experience and not even like firsthand, but even from, you know, I know many photographers, so, and, and many people in, in different, um, you know, uh, lanes of the arts that uh, kind of can relate to that whole experience of like, man, uh, this person got this job over me, but what type of person are they? You know, so mm -hmm. I, I definitely think psychology weighs the heaviest. And then after that, um, you know, the the, the education or, or the knowledge. Um, and then after that, I feel like the uh, the the artistry. So, yeah. Yeah. Have you ever have you ever gotten to a situation? I want to talk about your work a little bit now, um, but I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces on your on your feed here. And I'm wondering, I remember uh, I was on the shoot once <clears throat> as a photographer and I remember uh, I don't know what happened. You know, every now and then you have these brain fog situations where I just I just didn't I could find I had, I remember the night before the situation was the night before somebody had convinced me to put to activate back button focusing on my camera instead uh, of half press. Yeah, you know, and they were like singing its praises. Oh, it's the best thing because you just set it and you can shoot. And you don't have to worry about you know. So I'm like, okay, that makes sense. So I did it, played around with it, then went to a shoot the next day and forgot that I did it and couldn't figure out what was oh, wrong with my man. camera in basically in front of a live studio audience. And I'm just, you know, taking out of focus pictures for a while. <laughs> so, so that's, have you ever had like a, you ever, <laughs> I was going to say, have you ever had a situation like that where, yeah, you're personable and you're, you know what you, you know, you got this and then you get there and something happens to throw you off your game and you, you have to tap dance your way off stage. You ever been there? Yeah. And, and it'll be, it'll be those moments. Yo, it happens to the best of us. There's been times where I pulled up my camera and I'm like, the, the viewfinder is black. Something's wrong. My sister walk over. The landscape is on, and I'm like, oh my god, yeah, that's like number. That's that's photography 101. Make sure your landscape is <laughs> on. 
So How you much know, are they, you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm like, no, it's, normally I'm not like this, like you please. But yeah, it, it happens to us, man. And, and I also believe in, you know, like I had assistants on a shoot yesterday, and you know, ironically speaking of this, I had uh, an assistant on the shoot yesterday, and it was for the Oscars. We're having to process these images out. And we're trying to figure out like how to uh, make the selections under one category versus the other one. And, uh, you know, the client is like, well, do you know how to do this? And I'm like, ah. And then my assistant is like, hey, well, maybe you got to do this. And I'm like, well, please, by all means, please come over and, and help. Uh, so <laughs> the people you get or part of your team to assist you, I also feel like they need to be assets, not just yeah. people that are, you know, sponges, but people that can also at any given moment teach you something and shed some light on, you know, the, the game and, or the skill set. So I definitely think um, it's it's important to have that symbiotic relationship with, with your crew, with your team. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. There's, there's so much to talk about. I want to talk about uh, gear. I also want to talk about this, this uh, project with Adobe that you're, that yeah. you're helping them with, which, yeah. you know, I read the blog post, I read a little bit about it. I saw the names involved. I see what you guys are trying to do. It looks amazing. So can you can you tell us about it? Give us the from the insider's perspective what it's all about. Well, and, and life reflected with uh, Adobe Lightroom has been an amazing experience because it's it's connected me with creators and, and maybe people that wouldn't even consider them themselves creatives because sometimes you can uh, post a photo that you took on your phone and and it may be a raw image, but life reflected about connecting. Uh, visual images, creating this global gallery for people to uh, share what they, with their interpretation of these social prompts that Lightroom has created. So you, you can have life reflected. What does life reflected mean to you? When you look at, you know, most of us have our phones, most of us have a hard drives with endless amount of photos. And when you scroll through that, a lot of times there's so many photos that we snap that are, you know, that never see the light of day. But when you see those things, a lot of times, uh, you know, maybe at an event or um, at those uh, those monumental, you know, life moments of a baby shower or a wedding, you look back and reflect and you're like, oh, man, look at all these people here enjoying this moment. Or or look, when I was younger, uh, as far as the growth reflective prompt, just showing uh, just really inspiring people to kind of go back to things that they might have captured or in, in encouraging you to go out and capture something new to be part of this global share to kind of show how we are more alike than we are different. And I think that's been a, a great experience with this. You know, I may post some social prompts to my story and then, you know, I'll get some uh, people chiming in from South Africa, from Kenya, from Japan, uh, all being a part of this social prompt just from something that I'm posting to my stories, which just reminds you of, how much the internet connects us. And, and I think above all else, that's been probably one of the coolest experiences to see uh, you know, other people's interpretation of what these social prompts mean to them. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, and it's very timely, obviously, right now, you yeah, know, I'll, for I'll, everything I'll, that's going to... No, for sure, because we, we are... I think we as a people, humans, are, are more disconnected now than we have been in a long time. So showing some sort of connective tissue that binds us all together is is cr more critical now than it would have been say in 2019. <laughs> you know, so, totally agree. Yeah. And so, it's crazy so what, it, what, what a difference a year can make, you know? And then I yes. feel like given the, uh, you know, I'm, I'm downtown Los Angeles, but given the, the climate, especially last summer, which we're all familiar what last summer was for us, but living in these uh, large metropolis uh, areas, it's, it's, you, I couldn't be in this house and not hear protesting, you know, go by. Um, so with me, I almost felt like, I almost felt like a superhero during last summer in a sense where when I would hear chants or, or even, even when it wasn't the protesting, but down in the, in the large cities, there was a certain time every night we would all bang pots and make a whole bunch of noise for all of the, the workers, uh, mm -hmm. the, the first responders. So Whenever I would hear those sounds, it was like my back, you know, my back signal. I'd grab my camera and someone, I'll be back. And then, you know, I'd, I'd take to the streets on my scooter, on my bike, and I'd just go to the streets and, and I'd capture these moments, capsulating them in time because, it, it, you know, when, when I'm old and I can't stand up straight anymore, I at least want to contribute 
that I was a documentarian during, you know, these, these amazing moments. So I feel like things like that, life reflected, um, you know, growth reflected, um, change reflected, just uh, again, not even the, the protesting, but going out in the streets, downtown Los Angeles and seeing that one car, like my mind, I was like, what is this? It, it, it was surreal. So capturing right. moments like that and sharing it, um, you know, with, with these uh, social prompts, that's been kind of cool because it's literally given me uh, 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 an opportunity to reflect on the year that we just had. So it's yeah. been cool in that regard. Yeah, it's like, what was that Will Smith movie when he was in New York fighting the zombies? I yeah, I am legend. That's what I imagine cities like LA and New York look like for a couple of weeks or months. Yeah, it right? was, I mean, I'm talking about to the very four lane busy highways where it's like always cars, nothing. It was nothing. So, so it definitely felt like that. Wow. You know, I look at these these times and I think of, I wonder if you think the same. Um, it's kind of like rings on a tree. You know how you, you they cut down a really old tree and you look at the rings, rings and they can say, and you can say it, right here, there was a forest fire. Yep, and right yep. here, we can tell the oxygen levels were different. And yep. so you can tell the different major transitions that that tree had to endure. I feel like photographers like yourself, in a lot of ways, are those rings that are making sure that we will remember what happened. Do you agree with that? I, I totally agree with that. It's it's uh, they always say that a true artist is a uh, megaphone for the current times, you know, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be the music that you if, if you guys are watching the Oscars uh, that recently aired, you know, you have the artist her that won an Oscar for a song that she wrote, which was it. it embodied what we went through last summer and she won an Oscar for it. So 50, 100 years from now, when you look back at what, you know, what were the chart toppers of this year, of that year, you'll look back and you'll be like, oh, well, this song made it. Well, why was this a popular song back then? And you, you go back to 2020 and you'll see across the board that there was so much uh, social content because of the, the coverage of the social injustice um, that, that we all went through and or just this unprecedented global situation that um, that we all had to endure. So across the globe, 2020 will live in infamy. And, uh, you know, there was that joke uh, of a meme where it's like when in, in 25 years, when you mentioned 2020, there's going to be a lot of people with PTSD and, you know, they're just yeah. going to stop and think for a second, like, yo, 2020 was wild. That's right, right. And there's always, you know, I don't think there are, there are very many silver linings to, to 2020 or the COVID-19 pandemic. But one, if you could say a good thing came out of it was the planet finally got something to unify on. Right. Yeah. It's it's yeah. kind of like we're all we're all fighting against each other for whatever reasons and mad at each other. But uh, when aliens attack, we are probably going to come together as a planet and fight it. Right. Uh oh, James, I lost you. Oh, there you go. There you go. Look, camera popped off on me. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> I thought you put the lens cap on. <laughs> so look, right, how about that? Now, like I had to run back over there and cut it back on. Um, but yeah, it's it's uh yeah, it, it will feel like the aliens came down and took a visit. And you know, there there were even jokes about that where, you know, at the end of the year they can be like, man, 2020 was wild. And someone said, Well, what the pandemic or when the aliens came? And we're like, wait, hold up. <laughs> Hold up. So to around November, December, I was literally, I was looking at my wife. I'm like, I wouldn't be surprised if any day these aliens came. You know, that's that how wild. the right were. time. Yeah. I, like, mean, I mean, I'm thinking if you're going to attack a planet, might as well do it when they're already under duress, right? So. <laughs> how about it? How about it? Yeah. You know what? Uh, so again, so looking at looking at your work, I want to talk about the familiar faces that we see in there. None of them in particular, but just the that world and the genre of working with these, you know, famous and powerful people versus working with someone who's not so famous and powerful. How does that impact you as an artist and how you approach the job? Do you is it you just have less time and you just treat them as a normal person, or do you have to? apply a little bit of adoration to the ego to make sure you get it? Or are they just regular people? How do, how do you feel about it? I always, look, my, my whole saying is everyone is a regular person. Sometimes people just have glorified jobs. Um, yeah. and, and I feel like, because uh, at the heart and soul of it, it's, it's you realize, you know, how are you different because you're an entertainer versus someone, you know, if I'm shooting corporate headshots for, 
a bio or, or a neurosurgeon. You know, it's like, all right, both of y'all make a lot of money. All right, that's a given. But um, why should I treat you any differently than I do the person that's on screen? So in, in that regard, my approach is always treating everyone like, you know, you're, you're a quote unquote, a regular person. Um, but <laughs> I'd be foolish to say that there isn't some ego stroking that um, that's required sometimes just because, um, you know, I've, I've had an opportunity to work with some amazing people and yeah. some people are used to a certain uh, caliber of uh, amenities or, or used to being treated a certain way or catered to. So I try not to fall into that because I'm the photographer. I'll let their team kind of stroke their egos in that in that regard. But yeah. um, I honestly think because everyone gets the same treatment from me, which is love and care and understanding as far as like, all right, if you have an insecurity, which we all do, when you get the quote unquote, the regular clients to the celebrity clients, everyone has insecurity. That's number one. I need to figure out something to do about that. <laughs> No, go ahead. Go ahead. See, we're not streaming, so it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna just pop this. Oh, all right. Go ahead. You got to get that AC adapter. Yeah, man. Like, actually, you know what? I'm gonna order that uh, as soon as we. I think it's a setting though, because the battery is charged. Is, what is that? Is that a Canon? Yeah, Canon Mark IV. Yeah, Canon's hate. Canon's hate live streaming or recording like this Literally. and when we do our podcast <laughs> this happens too but like you said because we're not streaming we're able to maneuver around it mm -hmm. yep see this this is where premiere pro comes in <laughs> How about that? He's like, yeah, you're making this harder for me. All right. No, is that? I mean, no, you're making it easy for him because all I have to do is look for the blank screen and edit. Right oh yeah, there. right, right. <laughs> Boom. There you go. All right. So that's a, that's a brand new battery. It should work. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so let me let me start that again. I'll restate the question. What I was talking about. We what we're talking about dealing with celebrity personalities and you know, yeah. and you were you were you were saying something about letting them letting their entourage or their assistants handle, but at the same time, there's a certain amount of, yeah, you know. So it, it's, it's and, and one thing that I've noticed is that, you know, everyone has insecurities, you know, whether you're quote unquote a regular person or if you are that celebrity, that we all have our insecurities. You know, I may get, you know, a person that's a six time Grammy award winner say, hey, I've had three kids, can you cover this up? And I may have somebody that is just a house mom and she may come with me with the same request. So it's that, and that's what I mean when treating each client with the same love, care, and, and attention. So that way there is really no like, oh man, I saw behind the scenes when he did this shoot and he didn't do that for me. It's like, no, I, I, and I feel like that part is what kind of keeps you booked and busy is people yeah. enjoy um, working with you and they feel special just like, you know, everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, I, I'm torn on that. Cause on the one side, yeah, I treat them like everybody else. They put on their pants one, one leg at a time. You probably use the same toilet paper I use. These right. are just people. Right. But on the other hand, I could see from their standpoint of I am a product and what you portray me as has a direct impact on my work and how people perceive this product. So you know, taking a picture of Frederick, who's not famous, you know, is different than taking a picture of, you know, insert famous person here. Right? So, so that part, I, I completely understand. And I don't, I, I definitely understand that where it's, it's, all right, it's a product, it's all that. And even still, I still don't treat them any differently. I just, I'm just aware that the, the end goal is a little different. And Meaning it's just like, all right, you're going to be a little more particular of what's seen or shown or, or you know, the angles are, and, and so forth. So in that regard, yes, uh, there's a slight difference because, like you said, it is a brand. It is a it is a product in a sense. Yep. Um, and I don't mind that. And, and, you know, especially when you shoot people that have been in the industry since childhood. So they're yeah. used to having complete control over their image. 
So it's like, all right, well, I almost appreciate it more because you know exactly what you want. And if I can make you happy as an artist, then um, I'm ecstatic that uh, the shoot was a success. That's got to so, be yeah. hard, though. That's got to be hard as an artist. Uh, I don't know. Or is it just to like, say you get some, you know, I'm purposely not using any celebrity names. So you get like celebrity A here, like you say, who has been in the business since, you know, seven or something. Right. And been in front of countless movie cameras, still cameras, and you know, they know their way around. They may know your job better than you do, you know, in terms of what's going to go down. Right. If, they, if you're in that situation, how do you? and you have an idea for a shot that you want to experiment and make it something actually really cool, does that just, do you just go into technician mode at that point and just like, you know what, you know, Rembrandt lighting, boom, take the shot off. Oh, you know, how do you handle that? You know, with that, what, what ends up happening with that, I realize that you get to, ex, you get to explore more when you have uh, that trust with the client so I, the more i work with the client the more creative we can get but sometimes yeah. i may get a client that i'm working with for the first time that is a net you know uh, a familiar face but they're coming to me because of the creative freedom that i show you know on my social mm -hmm. media they're like oh i came to you because you're not just a photographer i came to you because you're an artist and i'm like oh okay we're on the same wavelength so let's create some fun yeah. but you know, like the contrast of that is, yeah, sometimes you like, oh, how about this? You're like, no, we're not, we're not doing it. So I'm like, okay. okay. So, <laughs> so they have that authority to do that, right? So of they're course. Not, Especially, you know, we always say, we always say photographers are, you're the, you're the, the, you're the photographer, you are the CEO of that, that set and you control everything that goes on. Not so when you're in these situations. Uh, not so much because you got to remember, it's like, who's paying the invoice? You? Okay. So what would you like? You know, so you, you can, give a suggestion, but it's not your show, you know? So yeah. it's, it's uh, and, and that's another thing too, where it's cool, you know, cause I've heard things about sometimes people being difficult with, mm -hmm. or whether it be a makeup artist, but oh, this person has been difficult. How are they with you? And I'm like, to be honest, uh, I can probably count on one finger who has been, you know, like a, of, a, of a difficult situation. But I feel like when artists, are or created you know familiar faces when they're in front of a camera you don't want to be difficult to the person that's responsible for your image you know it, it's just like that's it, right i don't know if that's because i'm you know a, a people person or if it's just like you know what this is a photographer let's make sure the, the energy is good so i don't really yeah. run into too many situations where it was like i'll never work with that that person again um yeah. i'm grateful to say so stakes stakes are a little lower but it's it's kind of like uh don't be mad. Don't be mean or say mean things to people that are serving your food exactly. <laughs> you know? and, or or people that are going to be operating on you. You know, don't be mean to the surgeon before they put you under. Right. Yeah. Like I, I went skydiving <laughs> twice. My first time I went skydiving, I, I tapped the guy, you know, that was tandem with me. I'm like, are you happy? Like, are you OK today? Are you having a good have day? Good <laughs> Just making sure he's like, this is it. I'm like, hold on. <laughs> so, yeah, you got to make sure. The people you work with, everyone's in a good mood. Yeah, no, I love it. Uh, James, let's let's wrap up with just a couple of uh, discussion points on the the technical side of the business, right? Sure. So, people always want to know what your workflow is, and I think mainly, and over the years, I think it's not so much that people want to emulate what you're doing, but they want to compare and contrast with what they're doing to either be validated or find tips on what they should be doing differently. So when you're, you're, you're out on one of these shoots, an editorial shoot, take me through a, a day in the life, starting with the night before. Is it, I always envision photographers like you that are getting ready to go do a, go do something big the next day. I hear the A team music in the background and they're going through and getting everything set up and charging batteries and all that. What does it look like night before to win this, when the subject, whoever they may be shows up? So look, I, I'll give you what, uh, 20, well, I'll give you what, 30 hours ago, uh, getting ready for the Oscars. Uh, look, I'm, I'm going around, I'm picking all my stuff up and I'm putting everything by the door. Uh, and I'll say this too, a lot of times, you know, people, we have assistants, but for the people that have been grassroots, like doing things themselves for so long, sometimes it's kind of hard to relinquish some of that responsibility because you're so used to doing it, you know, yourself. But um, so I, I'm, I may say some things where people are like, why didn't your assistant do that? 
well, you know, sometimes you feel more at ease knowing that it's done and you did it. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, a night and a half ago, I'm putting everything by the door. I'm charging all my rechargeable batteries. I'm making sure my five camera batteries are all fully charged. I'm, uh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm literally like, all right, well, this is going to be my uniform for the day. Uh, you know, making sure that my hard drives are clear. Um, you know, making sure all desktop icons are minimized. So that way when I'm showing the client the photos that, you know, there's no salt, making sure my Adobe Lightroom is not lagging. So, yeah, you, uh, yeah. you know, there's different things you're paying attention to. And then, um, you know, you get there, your assistants arrive, you tell them, all right, well, and, and I'll backtrack. You also make sure that, you know, your, your mood board or your, say, your, your Pinterest link, whatever you decide to use, is readily available uh, for the team. You're making sure that everyone is aware of the call sheets. Um, you're making sure everyone is aware of, you know, parking. It, all of the things that you want the arrival to be smooth, you're making sure that that's complete. And then when you get there, you know, we arrive a little earlier than the client. Uh, so you're making sure that the team that you have assembled, they're aware of the execution. What's the, the order of operation as far as the shot list? All right, we're going to go from this point A to this point B, then after this, we're going to switch the lightings to over here and then finish with shot C and shot D. And then after that, I'm going to need you to break down the equipment and then I'm going to need you to uh, drop the digital files in the hard drive and open Lightroom so that way we can go over the files with the client. And, you know, so that'll be, that, that'll happen from the night before to the morning of the shoot. And then right as the shoot ends, again, you have one person breaking down and then um, you're sitting there with the client going through the photos and then you, you have to realize, all right, well, they favorited these. Uh, you know, you give them the expectation for the projected uh, completion um, and you just making sure that, you know, everyone's on the same page, everyone's on the same email thread as far as like, all right, these photos will be delivered in X amount of hours or days and mm -hmm. um, yeah, you'll follow up with that. But it's it's I feel like it's uh and, and like I said, when I first, uh, you know, got ready for this, but I had just come back in the house from shooting. Um, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So it's one of those like literally I, I dropped my equipment down, set everything up and um, yeah, now we're here. So I try so to. When does, yeah, when does a job like that in James, like when you like so the, the Oscars, for example, that, that sounds like it, it almost like you're like planning to shoot a wedding, you know, where you, all the prep and everything and, and call sheets and this is going to happen here. And I want you to be over there to catch the, the bouquet toss and all that stuff. But That's the wedding about. ends, the wedding ends when the album is delivered, right? When, when does a shoot like the Oscars end is when you upload files or does it trickle on after that? Like how does, what's the, what's I the period I, at the end of the sentence? Yeah. I can honestly say once the files are uploaded for something. So, um, for, for an event such like that, once the, all the clients have all their their content, um, oh, we got Moody in here, but yeah, once yeah, the clients that. have <laughs> all of their content, um, that's when you can kind of sit back and, and take a side. And uh, yeah. it's one of those things when you're, I'll say, I got finished with a client yesterday and then in the middle of dinner, like celebratory dinner, like, oh, it's the Oscars. I get a call from another potential, they're like, hey, can you meet downtown to do another shoot for someone that's coming back from the Oscars and kind of need that ASAP? So I couldn't even finish my celebratory dinner. I had to box that up, go back to the room, get my equipment, take an Uber uh, to the, uh, the next location shoot. And what I thought was gonna be a night of relaxation and, and just kind of sitting back, I was up on that computer uh, editing um, until, yeah, yeah. you know, until the morning so it's 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 the i don't want to say a curse but it's the ebb and flow of being an entrepreneur it's kind of like yo when the work is present you need to drop everything and 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 work and take the work just because sometimes yeah. you know uh you don't know when the next gig is going to come and not necessarily is a real concern nowadays but it's it's still like um, I have tattooed right here, Carpe Diem, which is seize the day. And I'm a yeah, big yeah. person on, yo, if the opportunity presents itself and you're willing and able, like physically able, mentally able, um, do it. Why not? You're only going to be young once. And, you know, I, I love telling stories. So I just, 
I want to be that grandpa that's like, granddad, you told this story already. So I, I'm, I'm all about experiences, whether they're, um, you know, chasing a dream or those adrenaline junkie experiences. But yeah, it's, it's all part of the journey. That's good. I mean, that, that day in the life, uh, you know, a lot of people that are watching or, and or listening to this are like, oh, poor James had to leave his Oscar dinner <laughs> to go shoot another celebrity, you know, world's smallest violin. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And you know what? And it, it's, all, it's all about perspective because I didn't think about it like that, but when you say it like that, it's like, you know what, you know, when, when Harry and Meghan were, con you know, had their complaints about how living in the palace was, you know, people were like, man, that's messed up. Y'all were treated like that. But then there was a whole group of people who were like, oh, you're complaining. Now you have to live in your cottage because you can't live in the palace, you know, so everything is perspective. So yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. So oh, poor you, your poor cottage <laughs> while they're digging food out of the, the public trash can, right? Yeah. So because of that, I'll remain quiet. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all perspective, but it's good. You should articulate that because this is, you, I think James are, are in all seriousness, an, an inspiration, right? Oh, because man, photographers, black photographers, all photographers look at your work and think, he looks kind of like me. I might be able to do something like that, right? <laughs> so I, I, feel like, I think it's amazing. To me, I feel like that is such, it, it's an empowering thing, but it's it's a, man, um, you know, because when you look at, you know, I'm, as I'm looking up at Gordon Park's collection uh, that I have, mm -hmm. it's just like when you, representation is everything. A lot of people don't know what's possible until they see someone that looks like themselves. So I feel like, you know, somebody that may look up, you know, a 14 year old, 12 year old that may look up a uh, young black boy that may look up at me and see me with my beard and my tattoos and they're like, what? I could be a photographer? Yeah, you can. And it's something that I probably didn't really um convince myself that was possible until things started happening. But the 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 road from point A to point C, it was tumultuous. Those yeah. those ebbs and those flows, those highs and those lows, there's nothing like it. But yeah. uh being at I guess the the light at the end of the tunnel, it, it makes it gratifying as you know, because you know when you really work for something, it makes everything that much more enjoyable. So I'm just grateful for the journey because it's made me appreciate every win. I don't take anything for granted. Um, and although, like you said, it may sound like, oh, this guy, <laughs> every moment that happens, I do not take it for granted. I always make sure that I take a moment to pause and to reflect, like truly reflect. I'm like, man, this, this all started from betting on myself, going from college, shooting my friends in a dorm room, you know, for $25 to literally, you know, just making a living doing this. So it, it just, yeah. it feels, it feels amazing. Yeah. And you should, you should feel amazing because the, the work is amazing. And the, it, from what I hear, the, tra the trajectory that you're on is kind of a up and to the right traje trajectory, right? So the James Anthony we meet in 2024 is going to be different than this one. So with that said, if, if you could communicate anything to James Anthony 2024, what would you tell him? If you had a, you opened a portal in space time Ooh. and you could, you got, you got a minute to tell him something, what would you tell him? You know, this is a good one because most times people ask you, what would you tell your younger self? Uh, yeah. So this is a good one. I would say, uh, wow. Um, that's, I, that's, <laughs> I would probably say, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would say, remember how you were back then. Don't lose that, right? Don't lose, I, don't lose that passion. You know, don't so. lose that passion, and um, always remain humble. You know, like it just you, you are the same person that you. You, although you evolve, experiences will change you. That's undeniable. But yeah. never lose the core of who you are. And I think my family has a lot to do with keeping my feet right on the on this ground. And um, you know, I feel like there's so much of me that feels like there's so much more to uh, experience and learn. Mm -hmm. Where I feel like even the James Anthony in 2024 will still say the same thing. Like there's so much more to learn. Uh, yeah. You know, because I always say the more you know is the more you realize you don't know. So just always remaining humble and 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 just grounded. So let's let's wrap it up with um, some advice. So photographers, 
of, of from all backgrounds that are watching this and they're like, you know what? I kind of want to do that kind of work. I see his work. I'm inspired by it. I want to do that. You know, maybe not exactly that, but I want to move in that general direction. You know, it, what, what kind of advice would you give them as kind of first steps? I would say choose a, a genre or um, uh, choose a discipline of photography that really speaks to you. You know, a lot of people, oh, I want to be a celebrity for like, if that's not what you really want to do, you can make a living being a landscape photographer. You can make a living being um, a, an infant photographer. You can make a living being any type of photographer. The only thing is you just have to figure out how to get from point A to point B. So opposed to just saying, oh man, I wish I could say, I want to, how do I blueprint this out so it makes sense? How do I make this like really attainable? Um, I think that's the biggest thing. And then second, I think um, consistency and persistence will always keep you in, in the winning circle. You that's know, right. if, you, if you're persistent, um, that means, you know, unrelenting, never giving up. And then if you're consistent, meaning the quality that you're executing stays the same and it's not getting better, um, there's it's undeniable that that you're going to win. You know, a lot of times you hear a lot of these successful people say the only difference between me and a person that didn't make it is that I just never quit. So you can't put an expectation on like, oh, in five years, this is going to happen. Your journey may be shorter or longer than the next person. But as long as you realize that if those two qualities, if you're persistent and if you're consistent, you're you're naturally going to want to improve if you're doing something over a certain amount of time. So if, if you're focusing on those two things, it's it's almost impossible for you not to win. Yeah. I agree. A hundred percent agree. And uh, I, I struggle with that a little bit because it's, it's the, you know, you, on the one hand you hear, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again, right? Persistence. Right. right. And then on the other hand, you hear, you know, the incorrect definition of insanity, which is, you know, repeating the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Exactly. So I, those exactly. two things conflict with each other. And, and, you know, I, and you know, I feel like that's where the consistency comes into play where it's like, yo, if something's not working, be consistent at wanting to do better. So yeah. the consistency would, would come from that where it's like, yeah, the insanity would be doing the same thing over and over. But if you're consistently trying to do better, then your next attempt will be better than your last two. You know, yeah. so I feel like that's that's the the key to it is be be consistent at wanting to improve. Love it, love it. Well, let's leave it right there. Uh, this has been a fantastic conversation. I feel like we could we could talk for another hour or two. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so maybe we will. We'll do a follow up, right? And uh, and and touch base. Uh, I'll let you get back to your you know post Oscars decompression. <laughs> and, I'm not and, if people want to connect with you, James, they want to see your work or or check out the, the Adobe program, the life reflected thing that's going on. What's the best place for them to connect? The best place, uh, you know, I'm a visual uh, creator, content creator. So the best place to find me is on Instagram. Uh, and that's uh, Instagram with the handle. I am James Anthony. But across, you know, I share a lot of my content on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. And I am James Anthony on every social media platform. You'll always find me there. Very cool. All right. Well, James, thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate you. Congratulations on all your, your past successes and congratulations to James Anthony 2024 on all the stuff that he's going to do between now and then. <laughs> so, we need to do this podcast again in 2024. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. <laughs> we will. Okay. All right, man. You take care. Have a good day. All right, you too. You too.